Today on Pro Photo Tips, you're going to learn how to burn and dodge like a boss. Oh, I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in this weekend. That'd be great. Greetings, my photo homies. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now, today we're going to embark on a journey of amazingness into the world of burning and dodging, which is one of the most powerful things you can do in post processing. For those of you who don't know what it is, I'll summarize really quickly. Burning is a way to selectively darken parts of your photos, and dodging is a way to selectively brighten parts of your photos. Now, why on earth would you want to do this? Well, there are actually quite a few reasons. One is to even out exposure issues across the frame. For example, you can see here in this photo that these mountains over here are a little bit dark compared to these granite shelves over here. So I can actually burn and dodge to even out that exposure. Another thing you can do is you can emphasize highlight and shadow areas. For example, if you want to bring out the clouds here and darken some of these rocks under the water to add a little bit of contrast, you can also do that with burning and dodging. Nowadays, a lot of photographers are using dodging, especially to add atmosphere to their photos. Um, the more you dodge, the more you create this sense that the light is kind of shining through a hazy, thick atmosphere, giving your photos this kind of neat mood. But the main reason, the big daddy reason that you would ever want to burn and dodge is because it allows you to control exactly what your viewers look at in your photo. Um, Basically, in any photo, people will pay more attention to the bright parts of the image than the dark parts. And knowing this, you can get them to look at whatever you want them to look at. Now, Ansel Adams was a master at this process. And if he wanted you to look at a certain part of a photo, well then, by gum, he burned and dodged that sucker until you couldn't help yourself but look exactly right there. Now, let me show you a quick example with my own photography. This is a photo that I took in the Ansel Adams wilderness near Yosemite. And this is the straight out of camera image. I haven't done any adjustments to this at all. This is just how it came out of camera. But if I do a little bit of burning and dodging, I can force your attention away from the edges of the frame and to that beautiful mountain right in the center. Now let me show you that again. This is straight out of the camera and this is with burning and dodging. Notice how your attention drops from the edges of the frame, boom, right to the center. And that's what I want you to look at. I want you to see that big mountain, that's sort of the pinnacle, uh, pun intended, of this photo. As you can see, it's sort of like mind control, so try not to abuse your powers too much. Now, Photoshop does have burn and dodge tools built in, um, but I don't like using them for one particular reason, which I'll show you right now. It's that they are destructive. Because you use these tools on the image itself, what happens is it's kind of like making a copy of a copy. Every time you adjust the pixels, the image quality gets a little bit worse, and I'll just show you that right now. So if I take the burn tool and I darken, 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 uh, what's, uh, why isn't it darkening? What's going on? <laughs> oh, I got to turn off all my layers. Silly. So silly. Okay. So that's what happened. I've just burned, burned like crazy. I've burned a hole in my, in my photo. Now let me see if I can dodge that to bring those tones back. And let's see what happens when I do that. Well, the lightness comes back, but looks what comes back with it is this horrible, ugly artifacting in the sky. And this is exactly why I don't like using these burn and dodge tools. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to employ the magic of blending modes to burn and dodge in a completely non-destructive way. So let me go back and undo all that burning and dodging right there. Beautiful. Turn off those layers. Okay. So what I'm going to do, go ahead and take whatever image you want to burn and dodge and make sure you've got it selected. Then hit Control or Command Shift N to bring up the new layer dialog box and call this something like Dodging and Burning Layer. Now here in the mode, this is where things get cool. Instead of doing Normal, come down here and select Soft Light and then Fill with a Soft Light Neutral Color. Now what's cool about a Soft Light layer is that anything on that layer that's brighter than Middle Gray will brighten the underlying layer and anything that's darker than Middle Gray will darken the underlying layer. Which means that now instead of using my burn and dodge tools, I'm just going to go ahead and select my brush tool, which you can do by hitting the B button as in Batman. And now uh, go ahead and make sure you always want to use a low opacity with this so you're not making 
really dramatic, drastic changes. So um, anything that I paint on this burn dodge layer with, with white, uh, make sure your default colors are set to white and black. Anything that I paint with white is gonna get brighter. And anything that I paint with black is gonna get a little bit darker. So this is really cool because it means you can do very powerful things like add a simple vignette and brighten the center of your frame to all of a sudden draw attention from the edges just like we did before, right to the center with just a couple of simple brush strokes. And the best part is, if I take a look at just this layer, this is what it looks like. You can do anything to this layer that you do with any other layer. I can lower its opacity to make the effect not as pronounced. I can undo any of these brush strokes. I can erase these brush strokes. I can paint over them. And since it's a completely separate layer, I'm not worried about hurting the underlying pixels of the actual photo. I can even delete this layer and start over from scratch. So this is pretty amazing how powerful and cool is this. But as you may have noticed, we've got two problems staring us in the face. One is that you can see that the, the burning and dodging I did here, it's not very targeted. It's just sort of a general blob of white and dark. And the other problem is, the more that I dodge, the more that this area here gets washed out. So what happens if I want to dodge without things getting washed out? And what happens if I want to target my burning and dodging more specifically to just the dark parts or just the light parts? How the heck do I do that? Well, I am not one to let a couple of measly problems like that stand in my way. So check out part two of this video by clicking right here anywhere on the screen where I show you a couple of really, really super easy techniques to deal with both of those problems, to dodge without getting washed out, and to target your burning and dodging very, very, very selectively. Or if you'd like to improve your Photoshop skills even further, I've got a series of Photoshop tutorials available on my website. You can click on any of these uh, icons here. I've got basic Photoshop, like working with layers and masks. I've got advanced Photoshop, like creating extremely fine, uh, refined, high-tuned selections for uh, targeted editing, editing. And I also have some walkthroughs where you can follow along my exact Photoshop process. Uh, that's it for now. Like I said, check out part two. If you guys like this video, I would be honored if you shared it with your friends and subscribe to Pro Photo Tips here on YouTube. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.